What's going on, fellas? Today we're gonna to be trying out the bullet burner. This is the 22 caliber version. We've already seen the 45 caliber. Just got it hanging out there. We still got the 50 caliber coming up. I think this is just gonna be the standard 22, or maybe we'll call this a 22 short, because I was also thinking about doing a longer one. I had a viewer who sent in a video of one he made that's about this long. Seemed like it worked out pretty good. So let's see what this thing can do on diesel. This is basically the Zeus torch. A lot of people have been asking whether or not it could run on waste oil or diesel. And you can't run it that way handheld, I can tell you, but we're gonna see how it does stationary. The nozzle on this torch is different. The geometry is far different than this one. This is a totally different nozzle, even though they kind of look the same. They absolutely are not. So this ought to be pretty interesting. Let's check it out. We're gonna be running a two horsepower air compressor on this little bad boy. And uh, this is the 22 caliber bullet burner. So, certainly a very unstable combustor. All right, fellas, we're back. I gotta feed this damn thing occasionally or it'll die on me. So, I've got a graduated cylinder in the background here with a camera set up to it because I got a feeling that the flow rate's gonna be extremely slow. So, I don't wanna sit there holding a wobbling camera looking at a freaking graduated cylinder like I usually do. So, let's check this out. Okay, I'm gonna add fuel first. That's always the key to adjusting a very sensitive combustion system. If you add air first, it'll choke the flame out. We can always go rich. Rich just makes the flame burn sloppier. If you go too lean, you're in a flame out scenario. So we're gonna add some fuel. I was not expecting this at all. Absolutely incredible. Oops, see that? I added air first like an idiot. I broke my own rule, and you see what happened. If I would have added fuel first, it would have been good to go. All right, take two. We're primed up with some Witch's Brew waste oil. This came from a mechanic shop across the street, so 
It's got a little bit of everything under the sun in there, I would imagine. I'm going to see what happens first with the compressor that we've already used just for the purpose of comparison. And then we're going to hook up this small uh, dehumidifier compressor. I believe this is not a scroll compressor. I think it's um, a vein compressor, but I'm not 100% on that. It could be a scroll. I'll have to take one apart and check it out. getting the flow we need, that's for sure. If I turn it up, it'll die. I need to elevate the fuel somehow. I think that an idea. Unfortunately, the wind's blowing pretty bad. Okay, fellas, so here's the scoop. This nozzle is far more equipped to handle the job. It doesn't like working towards the lower end of the spectrum, but because this is waste oil, we're gonna give it a try. This is some super thick stuff. Wish I had something to show you. You know, I don't know what this is for sure, but as you can see, it's almost like chocolate. It actually increases the diameter of that rod for a second. <laughs> So that's some pretty thick oil. Um, and basically what's happening is the fuel pen stock and that nozzle is super small. It's like two millimeters, so 2.36. This one here is equipped with a much more suitable setup. So we're gonna take this nozzle off and throw it on the 22 cal just for waste oil though you would never want to put this on there for diesel it just wouldn't run right if something happens all the fuel dumps out of the stem and you end up with this vacuum wave and these pulsations so this can't run at the lower end of spectrum with um, low viscosity fluids but it should do just fine with the thick oil so we're going to give that a shot but that's coming up in the next video i don't have time to do all that right now but I want to get this little experiment out so we're gonna take this nozzle off throw it on that one and retry the waste oil test this one just isn't giving us the oil we want I can tell so that's where we are on that all right so we're just barely getting off the ground here
didn't like that. If you need something that's super low output though, this is the game to play. That's just an oil return strategy. It's probably starting to shoot oil into the airline now. Probably screwed. It's not a good thing. What we need to do on these pumps is make this discharge line about a half inch copper tube so that this oil isn't passing up into the system like this. That's 200 watts, by the way. All right, I've seen enough. Okay. Oh yeah, definitely squirting some oil. So that's the strategy we're gonna wanna deploy on one of these. If this line was a half inch copper line, that oil would not travel up into the system the way we're seeing it do here. Or at least if my separator was a little more adequate. This was just a in a hurry rush attempt to get the video off the ground. Um, we did have a couple of successful runs with a very special nozzle that I built that produces a higher vacuum off less air, but the precision of that nozzle are kind of cost prohibitive. Like, I don't think anyone's going to pay me 200 bucks for a nozzle, but it takes a long time to get that thing dialed in just perfect like that. Precision often doesn't come easy, so that's where we're at.